Hi again. In this tip, I'm going to show you guys a few different ways to bridge a gap or join some geometry that you're creating. And uh, let's jump right in. So in this scenario, I have a hard plastic case. It's uh, it's going to be sort of a um, sort of an object that you might have a drill, like a power drill in. So I'm just going to extrude these parts here up a little bit, and I'm going to create sort of a big bulky sort of handle structure just for uh, demonstration purposes and so using the rectangular selection I'm just gonna grab those polygons right there and uh, you know what let's go to the front view maybe this would come in like this and we can just sort of create that scenario create that shape that we're probably going to be dealing with if we were to really model something like this Okay, so at this point we might want to join those uh, those facing polygons at the top. And how are we going to go about doing that? Well, the most common way is to use the bridge tool. So we have these faces at the top, and if we select the faces, just the ones that we want to bridge, we can actually use the bridge tool, shortcut is B, and we can go from one corner to the same corner and it creates new geometry and if we look inside it's actually completed the geometry on the inside as well so it's created like a tunnel and at this point we can actually see that works pretty well but there's another way you can actually use the bridge tool in edge mode um, this is usually helpful if you don't have polygons right there because if you didn't have them you'd have to use edge mode because you have edges not faces but you can always use the close polygon hole tool like that and then use the bridge mode but if you didn't want to do that you can use edge mode I don't think it's as quick because you have to do it by hand but it'll still work so if you select all these edges you'd think that using bridge tool would bridge them all at once but that's not the case you still have to go through and do them one at a time go edge to edge this is really useful for more delicate work but for something like this it's quicker just to close those polygon holes and then use the bridge tool in polygon mode. However, there is a new tool. Well, it's relatively new. It's been around for a few versions. And it's called the Stitch and Sew tool. So the Stitch and Sew tool has a few options, but they're hidden. There's these options here, of course. But what it basically does is it lets you take a selection of edges and stitch it to another set of edges. Um, it works best when the edges have the same number of edges, when, when the groups of edges are the same number, so like 10 edges and 10 edges. So if we were to just use it, it'll take the first group and it'll move it to the second group. It's not really what we want in this case, but thankfully it does have a few options. If you hold shift while doing that, it creates new geometry, sort of replicating what the bridge tool does. If you hold control while doing that, it brings them together so they meet in the center. So this is a pretty useful way to uh, join edges and it's an alternative to using the bridge tool. It's also pretty versatile. So if I hold shift and I go to the other side, it'll create those new edges for us. Now I'm going to move over to another project real quick and show you another way it can be used. I have two planes here. They have the same number of edges along this edge. And I'm going to select them and I'm going to hold shift and say connect objects plus delete. Now because they have the same number of edges, it's going to work just as we think it will. Select the edges, use the stitch and sew tool, and we can go big plane to small plane, small plane to big plane. We can hold control and have them meet in the center, or we can hold shift and have them create new geometry. Now here's what it looks like if you don't use another plane with the same number of edges. The big plane has eight and the smaller plane has 11. We can connect objects plus delete and then we can select the edges so we can just select them like that now notice what happens when I try to use the stitch and sew tool it only goes up to the amount of edges it has to work with so it only goes to the eighth edge and it confuses things here um, if you hold control it still does that but if you hold shift it'll actually bridge the gap as you expect but it creates a bunch of triangles in between 
if you say create n-gons, well, you get an n-gon instead, and then you can triangulate that any way you want. But I just thought it was a really cool tip to share. Um, you can use it on flat objects, or you can use it on volumetric sort of shapes like this. So I hope that clears up how the stitch and sew tool can be useful and uses for the bridge tool as well. Um, if you have any other tips like this, let me know. I'd love to know a lot of the other little tips in these Cinema 4D tools. There are so many buried techniques and tips, and I just want everyone to surface them so we can all learn about them. And I hope you enjoyed this tip. Until next time, see ya.